Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Chris and I'm your dad next door. And as you're starting to see from a lot of these videos, the emphasis of this channel is to try and determine the cost versus quality or the benefit that you're gaining from your stream or your recording or your, your production value. Basically, what is the production value of what you're getting out of the products that you're purchasing? So today I wanted to give my uh, review or my uh, uh, presentation of a stream deck alternative that I found called touch portals. So we're going to go into that. I'm going to show you how to get it, how to set it up and what it can do to help benefit your recording production or your streaming setup. So let's get into that and we will uh, show you how that works. So again, the solution is testing touch portal today. Um, for those of you who do not know what touch portal is, it is very similar to a stream deck or something of that type of alternative. Um, it allows you to create custom commands using buttons. Uh, and setting those up to be able to either change scenes in a stream, start and recording, create clips, send out tweets, all these different kinds of things that streamers or production uh, production individuals, content creators, right? We'll use that term. Content creators can use in order to kind of enhance the way they interact with their with their uh, desktop environment. Um, again, this is a free solution. You end up with a four by two setup in the uh, in the free software so where i'm going to be showing you that sample here today if you pay i think it's ten dollars for their pro version you can get 110 buttons per page um, the one major difference between this solution and uh, stream deck software is that this is software only no hardware is provided so in order to make this work with your stream or with your set setup you need to have a uh, some form of hardware to load this onto. So for today's solution, I will be using an old uh, Android Samsung phone that I have that I have the uh, app installed on. Again, this is a very lightweight app. So this is a phone that I no longer use anymore. It's obsolete. You know, it's old Galaxy 5 or something like that that I don't use. So I just happen to throw the app on here and it basically sits in front of my computer and that's all I use it for now. Um, so it's a great option for an older device or if you've upgraded your phone and, you don't, and your old one's not really doing anything anymore, it's a great option to use that use this solution for that. Um, again, this does work for Windows, Mac, uh, Android, iOS. Um, today we'll, we will be uh, using Windows and Android for the samples, but the, the techniques kind of fall along the same path. Um, so for our, our prerequisites, we are going to need to download the Touch Portal software or Windows it'll be right down here Windows version and if you have Android device you will need to download the touch portal application to your Android device I've already done both of those so let's get those installed um, one other prerequisite you do need to get this to connect to your OBS suite um, is you need to download OBS WebSocket this allows the WebSocket server to be set up inside of the OBS environment it's an extension um, that you use there. So I will provide a link to this uh, WebSocket release in the description of the video. So be sure to make sure you grab that, otherwise it will not connect to your OBS environment. Now I have my uh, Touch Portal installed, my Android app installed, and the WebSocket all installed. Um, now that those are completed, I'm gonna open up just a basic blank version of this application. And you can see, like I was saying before, I have my four by two selection here option. Typically, if you have the free version, you will see a little yellow bar down here that will say um, you're limited to this four by two selection and you get up to two pages. Um, typically, yours will just have main if you're just installing. I'm using this testing one for this purpose because my buttons are on the main one. Um, but you, you get limited to two pages and a four by two solution. Again, if you pay $9.99, you get to upgrade and you get unlimited pages and buttons kind of thing like that. So first off, what we're going to be looking to do here is we're going to go into settings and you can see inside of here that uh, inside of our OBS environment, we have our WebSocket port. Typically, that is standard 4444. You can change that to whatever you want. Whatever you do change it to, though, you have to make sure that your OBS window lines up with that same WebSocket port. Um, when you install that uh, WebSocket portal or that WebSocket extension for OBS, it uses Quad 4 for its uh, standard port, though. So that shouldn't have any issues there, but you can also connect your Twitter account because this can send out tweets. You can also uh, connect your Twitch chat. So you can send out messages in chat with buttons and commands and things. So those are, those are additional options that you can include if you would like. So we're gonna kind of skip over that for right now, but 
Um, first thing we need to do when coming in here is we need to hit this little power button. Oh, another thing before I hit that, you can also set these buttons up into the landscape or portrait mode. Again, you're using uh, a, a portable device here, right? A, a tablet or a phone. So you can, you know, set your phone or device whichever way you want. That best suits your desktop environment, you know, so that way you can have it either way. And the buttons will rotate to fit based on the alignment that you put them in here. So, um, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to go connect with our OBS. Now, once you once you perform that action, you should receive an alert. Um, if you're using Windows 10, it goes into the focus assistant. Um, but you need to make sure that that alert comes up and it should say that a uh, new WebSocket connection has been has been connected. Um, once that comes up, you, you are able to go into any of these buttons. You can click on it and it will open up this edit edit window. You can name your button. So I'm going to say uh, uh, this, uh, I'm going to name this gaming scene. Okay, we're just going to name it gaming scene. Um, and I can go down to, go down to OBS. And we are going to go to scene selection. And now all of my scenes that I have currently should be showing here. So I'm going to select gaming and hit save simple as that right so we're gonna hit gaming scene um and then what i'm going to do is currently the scene that i'm on right now is listed as desktop so i'm going to create an additional button that will go back to my desktop. so i'm gonna scene selection i'm gonna name this button a desktop oh, if i could spell there we go and i'm going to go to scene selection desktop save save so now i have two buttons here for gaming scene and for desktop and once you create those the one one nice thing is as soon as you edit these buttons they stood they should start showing up in your touch portal so already i've created them i haven't hit any additional buttons and you can see in here i have well can't really see on this device. there we go uh maybe yep you, you should be able to see that i have a gaming scene and a desktop um on this window here it doesn't carry over the text but in your button it should um just for the sake of visibility on your guys' side. I'm going to change these button colors. You can do gradients. You can add in pictures. You can make the backgrounds transparent. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with these. Um, take of this, though, I'm just going to make these a little more on my camera so you guys can tell what these buttons look like. This. Give that. And now these two, see these two buttons have already changed colors there, and they are working as, as anticipated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, like I'm just going to click gaming scene and you should see this transition, right? My camera moved. It doesn't do a major transition there because it, uh, OBS is only moving my camera because that's the only thing in the scene that's different. But I go back to desktop and you can see that all I'm doing here is hitting these two buttons and it's making this transition happen. Now what you can do is I will go, I will create one additional button um, we're going to do, we're going to get a little more, we're going to go to hanging out. And so I'll show you what that one looks like. That's, that's my full screen camera that we use for my intro video there. I'm just picking some colors, right? And the buttons do work if you don't name them, by the way. So you have a, if you have a graphic that you want to use, um, kind of thing like that, but I'm going to hit this, hit this hanging out button. It should go to my full screen window here. Right, so now you can see that and then I'm going to go back to my gaming and it rotates back to there. Now, one nice function that Touch Portal has added in and very similar to what Stream Deck has as an option is the ability to link multiple act actions to a single button and to add in delays. So one really neat thing is for this intention, um, we can go over to our desktop button and I'm going to show you how this works. Um, we can add in. Oh, not paste action. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to go to scene selection and I'm going to pick what I call my desktop transition. And I'm actually going to make that the first command. And then I'm going to add in under this logic ability. They have a timer. And what this is, is right what it says here, waiting time in milliseconds. So whenever we set up a timer for something like these transitions or basically whatever you're trying to use a delay for, um, in this instance, if you're trying to do something that's kind of creative with transitions, always make sure that your delay time is longer than your transition time. 
otherwise it'll cut in the middle of your transition so in this instance i'm trying to do something my transition is 1000 milliseconds so i'm going to set this up for 2000 milliseconds and i'm going to put this in between these two scenes and i'll explain what's going on here in just a second but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna save this button and i'm going to just for a second go back to my hanging out screen right so we're on this full screen window here and then when i hit that desktop button again what it's going to do is it's going to play that desktop transition scene it's going to wait two seconds and then it is going to activate my desktop scene so those are going to be two different kind of functions there but here we go watch this it's going to transition just to my desktop and then it late fades in my camera afterwards, which is a neat little effect that you can add to that using those multiple commands. And the way I actually do that is inside of OBS, I have a, sorry, um, inside of OBS, I have um, two scenes that are created for, um, I have two scenes that are created for desktop, which has just my main desktop activated. And then I have a, I mean, all my additional ones, basically I duplicated, I duplicated my desktop scene and then I deactivated everything except for the desktop window. And then I had my, and called it transition. And then I have my standard desktop scene that I use with my social media graphic and, and logos and things like that on it. And then with that one, so it, it will load in my primary scene and then it'll load in the additional scene two seconds later. So a second after the transition completes. And what that is actually doing is it's, the way, since OBS only transitions things that are different, sources that are different between two scenes, it only fades in my camera after the effect, which is a really nice little late camera fade in effect that kind of adds to your to your transition or your scene, which is really nice to have. I, I really enjoy that setup and I think it's a great thing to add to your stream just to give you that little bit of, uh, again, production flair, right? It just gives you a little bit of additional function there that you can do with that, um, but, that is, uh, that is what those delays can do for you. So that is my real quick little explanation and demonstration of what Touch Portal can do for your stream and different ways that you could add this in. Again, this can be used for a lot of other functions. I mean, there's artists that use things like this for Photoshop. You know, you can use it again for sending out tweets, uh, creating clips, doing uh, saving your replay buffer from your OBS stream. Um, again, this does work with XSplit and there is a stream lab solution. I have not tested either of those yet, so I do not know if those functions, how those functions are configured, but this was specifically for the OBS environment. Um, but that is my, uh, that is my presentation and my demonstration of this. Again, if you have any questions or comments, you can always catch me on my Twitch. I stream Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays. Um, and then, or you can send me comments or feedback in the, uh, in the, in the bottom of this video here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was informational for you. If you want additional content, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you like this, and then I'll try to provide some more solutions or more actions that can help benefit your streams or things like that. Um, I'm additionally performing, uh, other unboxings and things like that for different tech and lighting and stuff like that um, the intention is of this channel right now is to provide solutions that work for streamers that are 50 bucks or less so if we continue down that model and we continue down that path and we can increase the production value of our stream for $50 or less. I think that's a great solution to have for us and be able to continue to do things and grow our, grow our channels and our, um, and our communities. So with that, I am Chris, your dad next door. Hope you check out my other videos and I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.